Hello, Bishop Wooden here. I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I am so excited about the things that God is doing. And the things that I'm speaking of right now in particular is I'm excited about tonight's service. There's a word that the Lord has given me to teach tonight that deals with how we respond to life, to the offers of of the devil, to the offers of the world, to the offers of God, to all of the things that come our way. And our response is based on our current or previously built or current relationship with God. Where you are with God determines how you respond to what life, to what the Lord, to, eat, to, to what Satan even brings your way. And it is so important that we're in a place with God where we learn to respond to everything with a thus saith the Lord. Not with my opinion or your opinion or how you feel about a thing or how passionate you may be or how uh, invested you may be. The, the concern is this. Are we living lives that bring glory to the God of the Bible? And are we living in a manner where we will protect that glory? Where we will make sure that he gets the credit for whatever comes our way. Hallelujah. And I tell you, the Lord is going to bless us. And we're on the eve. This message is actually a setup for what we're going to talk about in the shut-in. Yes, in the shut-in, We this coming Friday, we are going to, at 7 p.m., we're going to meet right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And my friends, the shut-in is not a fancy service. It, we, we won't have a guest artist. We won't uh, have um, hours and hours of, of praise and worship. We won't have do those things that help add a little flavor and luster to the service. And there's nothing wrong with those things because I tell you what, we have the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest praise team, the greatest church house band, some of the greatest preachers and teachers and workers uh, in the body of Christ right here. And we will sing. We will sing songs of praises. We will, we will sing unto the Lord. But the shut-in, the emphasis of a shut-in is not some of the things that you normally see in a normal worship service. The shut-in is a time where we come together and we do just that. We shut in and we spend time in prayer, crying out to the God of the Bible, seeking his face, allowing the Lord to speak to us. You know, prayer is a conversation. Prayer is time that we spend telling God what's on our hearts, telling God what's on our minds, emptying our thoughts and our minds and our spirits to the Lord, turning ourselves over to him. But it's also a time where we listen to see what the Lord will say to us. Because in prayer, we talk to God, but my friends, in prayer, God talks to us. And listen, not only will we pray, but the Lord has given me, I have spent uh, uh, time before the Lord and God has given me a teaching that I am going to do. And one of the beautiful things about the uh, shut-in uh, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next morning, we will have time, time to pray, time to lay before the Lord, time to teach the word of the Lord, and time to let that word like a slow rain seep into us. I want to invite you to join us for the shut-in. Now, Shut-in is not for every believer. Things like this are, are not attractive for the carnal Christian, the nominal Christian, the Christian who uh, has to have sensationalisms and thrills and frills in order to draw them out to service. The shut-in is for those who are serious about seeking God or those who want to be serious about seeking God. It is for those who want to get into the presence of the Lord and spend some time there. Jesus says, if you abide in me 
and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He didn't say if you visit me, stop in right quick, check me out, have a little quick word, uh, whisper just a little prayer and you're on your way. Uh, and then you can ask what you will know if you spend time before me. So I want to invite those of you who are interested in spending time before the Lord to come to the shut in. Bring your pillows, bring your uh, blankets. <laughs> yeah, if you pray and you get tired of kneeling or, or if I'm teaching and I run a little long and you find yourself dozing off, well, take a nap, wake up and, and, <laughs> and rejoin us. And we're going to be here all night long before the Lord seeking his face. You know, the theme for 2019 is seek the Lord, seek the Lord, seek me and you shall find me when you have searched for me with all of your hearts, Isaiah 29 and 13. And then Isaiah, uh, that's Jeremiah, excuse me, 29 and 13. And then Isaiah 55 and six says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call ye upon him while he is near. Well, we are going to seek the Lord uh, during the shut-in. And I want you to join me. I want you to come out. And also this, one of the things the Lord has shown me is, with all the things that are going on in this world, the saints of God have to be prepared for what's coming. And there are those of us who have spiritualized and we can look out and see that there are things going on in the world today. There is a growing anti-Christian uh, way of thinking, an anti-Christian sediment, an anti-Christian atmosphere in our nation and around the world. And uh, anti-Christian, anti-Israel, uh, uh, anti-Semite, anti the things of God, just as the Bible predicted that they would be. But let me tell you something, that there would be. The God of the Bible says this, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. And let me tell you something, saints, it's in shut-ins, and it's in time before the Lord, and it's in Bible study, it's in fasting, it's in praying that you build your spiritual endurance. Anybody can serve God for a moment. Everyone can serve the Lord. Everybody can serve God on sunshiny days. Yes, we can, we're all Christians when the Lord is giving us everything we want. And, uh, and it's just ours for the asking and it's being poured out. And uh, oh, my life couldn't be better. But what about those seasons where you, where you don't get anything you want? What about those times in life where your body is afflicted and it seems the affliction will not move? Or your community has turned against you. You notice that your friends don't call. Your buddies don't speak as much. Uh, people have pulled away because of your stand for the Lord. What happens when you clash with the world and the world is calling you judgmental and self-righteous and all those things simply because you agree with God? Well, let me tell you, to make a stand is one thing but to be prepared to endure, to even overcome the pushback as a result of that stand is another thing altogether. And that's where I find that many Christians aren't prepared. They aren't prepared for Satan's response to their stand. And some Christians, because they're not prepared, what they've decided to do is to simply not make a stand at all. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to have to. The world is not going to allow you, uh, brother and sister in Christ, to remain in the shadows. The world is saying you got to come out and stand with us. And if you're not standing with us, then, uh, then the world is saying you're standing against us. We won't allow you to be indifferent. Well, the Lord is saying, who's on the Lord's side? Who's going to stand with me? Jesus says, he that is not for me is against me. So... It seems to me both sides are saying, pick a side. Well, I'm on the Lord's side. <laughs>
<laughs> and you're on the Lord's side and we're going to come together and we're going to pray and the Lord is going to strengthen us. And when the smoke clears and the dust settles, guess what? The saints of God will be standing victoriously, shouting the glory, shouting the victory, saying, what a mighty God we serve. So I'll see you tonight uh, in Bible study, and I will see you tomorrow night for the shut-in. Uh, we have some uh, special guests who, who are going to join us. One of our members, yes, he joined our church. He lives in Chicago, but he's a member of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Uh, Pastor uh, Al Cleveland is coming in for the shut-in. He's coming in for the shut-in. And evangelist Barbara Calloway from out in uh, Dallas, the McKinney, Texas area, she heard about it, and she's coming in for the shut-in, to be a part of the prayer, to be a part of seeking God, to be a part of calling on the name of the Lord. And uh, it's going to be amazing what God is going to do. But uh, And there are others. Pastor William Cooper has already told me, I'm coming to the shut-in. Pastor James Parker is coming to the shut-in. Pastor John Lyon is coming to the shut-in. And there are others uh, who may come and, and be a part of this that uh, who have not, uh, that I haven't spoken to directly. But I tell you, I'm moved by uh, the, uh, the uh, response. And I'd, I'd be excited about the shut-in if it wasn't but five of us. I realize that the... Uh, Ice cream truck draws more people in the community than the bookmobile. But for those who are interested in learning about God, let me tell you, you'll go much further in life from what you learn from the bookmobile than you will from what you get from the ice cream truck. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. God bless you. May God's choice blessings be yours. God bless.